Rider Belt Weekday 3, and this time we are looking at one of the more revered belts in the series, Kabuto, and that means the Kabuto Zector. And if he's watching, again, thank you very much to MST3K Tom for helping me track one down of my own. This is one I was looking for long and hard for a long time. Thrilled to finally have it. And now review it for everybody. As you can see, the motif this time is a beetle. It is the Rhino Beetle, just like Stronger. We had that moment of sadness. Just let's move on from that. Here we see lots of metallic red paint all over this guy, giving it a very high-tech, very metallic look. It's really hard to make plastic look like metal. It takes just the right shade of paint, and this does it brilliantly. It looks like a heavy-duty piece of machinery. The, the silver ring on top helps that as well. A few bit of striped detailings give it a bit of a Kabuto beetle shell. A few moldings on the top of the horn, I should point out, too. Also, legs. Well, I, I hesitate to call them legs, really, but you know they're silver-painted nubs that function as legs. On the other side, you will find they have the one, two, three molded in. Can't imagine what those will be for. And if you want just a little bit extra detailing, eyes. Oh, they didn't forget that this was supposed to be a beetle. I really like that. And silver uh, gold horn on the front, but we will get to that. And if you want to look a little bit more like a beetle, the rear does open up to show it in flight. Really like that. It really helps it stand alone from the belt as something of a toy itself, just like Kivat did. So that is actually a really nice touch that I quite enjoy. Now, as for sound effects, let's see here. Is it on or off? No, it's on right now. Hang on. I want it off so you can get the full range of sounds and lights out of this thing. So, now we turn on. Central light a little off-center in this form, but you'll see why later. Now, as for sound effects in this mode, you have three of them. And you have three buttons, and you would think that corresponds. It does not. All three buttons do the exact same thing. So no matter which one you hit, you trigger the same sequence of sounds. There he is in flight. He's playing peekaboo, I guess. And he has spider sense. Now, as I said, it doesn't matter which button I hit, it's going to be one of those three, and while it seems random, it seems random, but when you first turn it on, those three noises are always in that sequence. It likes, it's like it picks from multiple arrangements, I guess. It's kind of hard to phrase it. It feels random, but it doesn't feel random. It's kind of strange that way. Now there is one other sound effect I can demonstrate in this mode after a jump cut, which in no way means that I forgot to record this the first time I... Never mind, never mind. That's not important. What is important is we get that final little noise out. It happens when you flip the horn while still in Zector mode unattached to the belt. It doesn't like you doing that. So don't. It's a mistake. As a standalone, that's all it does, so we need to move on. Let's see the belt. And here you go. I, I know, it, it seems like it's missing a lot for a belt, and let, let me explain why here. It's a Type 1, it's a version 1 belt, so it doesn't have any way of removing the strap on either side. That gets really annoying, especially when it's a toy you want to play with a lot. It also really hinders storage. And this would make it a little too wide on both sides for me to properly store it anywhere right now. So I leave the straps off. I will show you, though, that they are silver painted on the sides here. That will extend the size of the buckle and make it look a little bit more substantial. You've got an overlapping metal detailing, similar to how it looks in the show, and a clock-up pad. 
That does not work. You get one on the other side too, it's just for decoration and imagination. No electronics here. That aside, I don't need the straps to demonstrate everything about this toy. And let me show you the naked buckle first. Very simple. You've got some nice molded details, a little bit of color there, green buttons in the middle, a uh, gold, uh, I, I don't know, it actually does have the beetle emblem in it, which actually is a nice little touch. Just to show you what direction to slide the beetle in. When we slide it in, it'll go down these little plastic tracks and hold into place, just to make sure it has a smooth transition from one point to the next. So, that's pretty much it. So, from here, time for the Zector again, bringing it back and finding the tracks. There we go, sliding it into place. We have officially henchined. Nice noises. I really like, I really dig the noises in this belt. You can start seeing more sound effect lights coming up too. Uh, give me a minute, I'll show you more. For now, let's try the buttons again. A rather generic sound, I'm not quite sure what's going for there. I don't know. Check the comments, someone might have a better idea than me. But let's play some sounds that we actually recognize from the show. Flip the horn just a little bit to initiate cast off. Cast off! Now we can see why the light was off center, and there's plenty of lights in it now. Love the multiple colors and patterns going on in it. From here, the design has completely changed. The gold section of the horn is now very prominent, and it scarcely looks like a beetle anymore. It's opened up into a proper high-tech looking buckle. In fact, there's some Showa riders that had buckles that looked surprisingly like this. From here, there's multiple directions we can go in, but let's start with the primary direction everyone's thinking of. Let's do the rider kick. Now again, you can go one, two, three like in the show, but it actually doesn't matter. All the buttons trigger the same electronic sequences. So let's just do it officially. One light, two lights. There are four lights. Wait, wrong reference. Anyway, slide it closed again. It's waiting for you now. Move it all the way back. Charging. Go! Just like Deno, it just kind of leaves off there, but it's such a strong noise, it doesn't feel like it needs to go any farther. That's all I really wanted to do, and it sounds awesome. Very accurate sounds to the show. That's about it for the main function, so we can do one more thing. Closing this back up, and the armor goes back on. Wait a, wait a minute! I've heard that noise before. Uh, see, it's this. It's the noise a Gaia memory makes when you remove it. <laughs> that is so weird to know that it was stolen from Kabuto. Jeez. Well, if we're learning anything from Rider Belt Week, it's that Bandai will go to great lengths to pinch a penny sometimes. Lifted sound effects aside though, we're pretty much done. We press down these two red buttons on the front and extract. To go right back to the normal Zector mode. And that pretty much finishes us off. While it does seem like a simple belt compared to the ones we get today, I can't really say I feel like anything's missing from it, with the exception of a clock-up pad, but besides that, the belt really feels very substantial, very cool. Sound effects are great, look is great. What I really love is how interactive the functions are between the multiple buttons, the horn, the shell, the wings. It does a lot for a little tiny package. Yeah, if you count up the functions it has, it seems small. but the playability it has more than makes up for it. While the eBay prices on these do tend to get ridiculous, if you can find a collector's form selling it, or 
if someone's selling a Korean one off eBay that has identical noises, I don't think you're going to do wrong. It is a very fulfilling belt and very fun to play with. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have the rest of Rider Belt Week to prepare for. As Grandmother once said, there are more toy reviews to come. Grandma was really odd.